Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Science Reads for Summer and Beyond. AW presents fun STEAM reads for all young readers. I am Ronnie Curry, Books for Youth Senior Editor at Booklist. And before we begin, I will go over some technical details. Today's slides and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download them by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. If you have any trouble, please contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. If you're in the audience, you are in listen-only mode, but we do welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. So if you have a question or if you need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that pops up. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we can pass along all other questions to today's panelists. That way, they can follow up with you after the webinar. Booklist offers closed captioning on all of our webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar I mentioned before. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. And finally, Booklist expects all participants to maintain an atmosphere of respect and fairness. Anyone who violates this standard of behavior including engaging in any form of harassment, may, at the discretion of the organizers, be immediately removed. We have a wonderful program today, so let's meet our panelists. From the Albert Whitman team, we have Karema Carrillo. Karema joined the Albert Whitman team in early 2022, specializing in content strategy and digital marketing. Having graduated with a degree in publishing studies, Books have always had a special place for her. An avid reader and semi-non-practicing book annotator, Karema is looking forward to helping launch more trusted, relevant, and inclusive AW titles. Josh Gregory joined Albert Whitman as an editor in 2021, and since then he has worked on everything from picture books to chapter book series and middle grade novels. He is also the author of more than 250 nonfiction books for young readers. There are a few things he loves more than a great story, and though he is frequently accused of spending too much time with his nose in a book, he does not plan to cut back anytime soon. We will also have a chance to hear from Andrea J. Loney, author of the Abbey and Orbit series, and Sue Fleece, author of the Kid Scientist series. We will learn a little more about these fantastic authors and their work later on in the program, but for now, we will kick things off with the Albert Whitman team. So without further ado, Karima and Josh, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. My name is Karima Carrillo, and I'm a marketing coordinator here at Albert Whitman. I'm very excited to be here and share the space with some of our excellent AW authors and one of our very own editors. Uh, just before we begin, I would like to share that we are celebrating 104 years of independent publishing this year at AW, just something we're very part, proud of as a team. Uh, since we are discussing stories, it feels appropriate to share a little bit about AWs. Founded more than a century ago, our goal was simple, make good books that kids want to read. Today, we continue this tradition by a guided deeper mission to create stories that also educate and empower children. Here at Albert Women, we believe that when we put the right story in the right hands, we can inspire the next generation to make the future brighter for everyone. Can I have the next slide? This being said, we take pride in our catalog, which brings a variety of titles to the table. While we're here to discuss our STEM-focused titles, we also home an abundance of diverse stories. Our She Made History collection inspires readers with true stories of historic women, and our Celebration and Holidays collection introduces kids to the many ways people celebrate and find meaning in their traditions around the world. You can find these and many more at albertwomen.com. Uh, can I have the next slide? Okay, folks. Uh, well, let's get up and at them. Get it? At them? Because we're talking science. Uh, speaking of science, here at Albert Women, we believe that STEM-focused stories give kids the confidence to ask questions, 
make mistakes, and find answers. And for reference, the recommended age group for these titles are pre-K to third grade, so around four to eight years old. But as we all know, picture books can be for everyone. Can I have the next slide? OK, let's get started. Uh, when we were trying to figure out how to kick things off for this webinar, we came to the conclusion that it's always best to start at the beginning. And we mean that literally because Chicken Frank Dinosaur is a picture book with a comic book style introduction to evolution. Chicken Frank wants to prove that he's related to a T-Rex because of evolution. But none of the other farm animals believe him until he gets his DNA results. Uh, this book combines information with a humor to explore the concept of evolution and connection between birds and dinosaurs. Can I have the next slide? Our next title is a wonderful picture book biography. Tuya Yu had been interested in science and medicine since she was a child. So when malaria started infecting people all over the world in 1969, she went to work finding treatment. Trained as a medical researcher in college and healed by traditional medicine techniques when she was young, Tuya Yu started ex experimenting with natural Chinese remedies. The treatment she discovered through years of research and experimentation is still used all over the world today. School Library Journal said this book was a much needed biography of a woman scientist and a great addition to any library's STEM collection. Can I have the next slide? And keeping a little to the same vein, we have Hero Rat, Magawa, a life-saving rodent. Magawa, an African giant pouch rat uh, with a special skill, sniffing out buried lime mines. Following this hero rat from training at a university in Tanzania to working in the field in Cambodia to winning a gold medal for her efforts to make, it, to make land safe for humans and animals once again. This is a book list star review title and is a fun series that kids will enjoy. Can I have the next slide? Continuing with our animalographies, we have Spider Knot, Arabella the Spider in Space. Told in the first person as it written by Arabella herself, she describes how she was the first spider to spin a web in space in 1973, and even made it to the Guinness Book of World Records. Can I have the next slide? Now let's dip into some of our STEM focus series, beginning with our Science Makes It Work collection. This series explores science and the world around us by focusing on familiar objects and using them to make advanced concepts accessible. Can I have the next slide? The latest in the series is The Sound of a Guitar. Here we follow Mia, who is determined to be a guitar hero and learn everything she can about this amazing instrument. So she sets out to gather the knowledge she needs to build her own instrument and put a show on for her family. In the story, we touch on different topics related to sound, like how the, so the shape of a sound affects its pitch and volume. Can I have the next slide? Others in this series include a perfect paper airplane, where we go through the process of what it takes to make the perfect paper airplane, growing food in the garden, where we learn about photosynthesis and the roles that we, the roles bees play in the garden, while our main character, Daniel, tests his skills out in a local community garden is another in this series. In The Wonder of Color, James explores color, and he has a lot of questions about where color comes from and how our eyes see it. As he experiments and he reads, James learns about prisms, the color wheel, and light waves. And Lily, in The Secrets of the Snow Globe, is a collector of snow globes and wants to know all about them, who invented them, what the snow is made of, and how she sees, and how the tiny scenes look so magical when she peers inside. As, he re as she researches and experiments, Lily learns about light waves, magnification, and density. Kind of the next slide. This next series, our Tell Me Why series, is written by award-winning science author Robert E. Wells. This series includes clear explanations and eye-catching illustrations about popular STEM topics, but from surprising perspectives. Can I have the next slide? The newest book in the series is Tell Me Why the Ocean is More Than a Home for Fish. In this book, not only will you be encaptured by the beautiful illustrations, but you will tour the ocean's many levels, encounter amazing creatures along the way, and you'll learn about the role oceans play in supporting biodiversity and regulating the climate. The next slide, please. Others in this series include Tell Me Why the Moon is More Than a Nightlight, where we discover how the moon was formed and why it changes shape in the sky. 
we learn about the moon's story that began 4.5 billion years ago and how it continues to affect everything we do today, from weather to timekeeping. Kirkus Reviews review this title as a solid introduction to some complicated science. Uh, in the molecules, the molecules that make you you, well, well explores DNA with curiosity and awe, pairing thrilling facts with clear explanations. Our human DNA might be 99% the same, but that last 1% difference makes each person unique. School Library Journal says that this straightforward, easy to understand and brightly illustrated book would make a good addition to any nonfiction collection looking to fill biology gaps. Can I have the next slide, please? This next title received the 2023 Green Earth Book Award for children's nonfiction recommended reading. Water takes a look at a common substance and its uncommon existence. The School Library Journal described it as a beautiful, a visually beautiful introduction to water in our present world. Can I have the next slide, please? Last, but certainly not least, comes one of my favorite pastimes, sleep. Read about sleep habits of birds, insects, animals, and more as we learn about how our bodies are, des are designed to help us slumber. Uh, this book was, was, was reviewed by School Library Journal as a solid introduction to the biological, biological function of sleep. And now I'm going to pass it off to Sue. Hi, I'm Sue Fleece. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't sure whether I was going to introduce myself or not, um, but I am Sue Fleece. I'm the author of over 50 children's books. Um, and Karema uh, did such a nice job. Thank you, Karema. Um, I am so pleased that I get to work with Albert Whitman. Um, they're a great publisher and I have so many books with them right now, um, which is really fun and really amazing. And I've worked with a bunch of editors there. So I'm, I'm really excited to continue that. Um, three of the books that um, we're going to focus on today are Goldilocks and the Three Engineers, which is part of my um, Fractured Fairy Tale series with Albert Whitman. And then I have Cicada Symphony, um, which is a nonfiction lyrical picture book um, about the life cycle of the cicada, and um, which is something near and dear to my heart. And I'm in Virginia, so I experienced that firsthand, the, the latest brood. And then my kids scientist series, which um, I'll explain more about too. Um, and that newest one is Volcano Experts on the Edge, which also came out this year. Um, next slide, please. So the Kid Scientist series, um, I'm so excited to get to work on these because as I tell kids in school visits, I am a lifelong learner. Um, you're always learning. And I, as a writer, I'm constantly learning, especially when I'm writing something um, new. And I do research, I tell them for both fiction and nonfiction. Um, and especially with the Kid Scientist series, um, I get a lot of questions like, are you a scientist? Um, and the answer is no, um, but I do feel like I've become mini expert in a lot of these different sciences because um, I have to learn all about what these um, sciences are, study, involve, and, and then I have to create a narrative or a story around how can these kids um, explore this science, get a hypothesis, then prove the hypothesis, um, and each book has uh, the scientific method in the back and how how you, if you were a child thinking about this as a career, how you could get started even as early as, as now before you go on to college and, and, and find a major and all of that more complicated stuff. Um, but this series is um, is so fun. So far we've, um, well, actually you can go to the next slide. I think we have a picture of some of the other um, well, this is the volcano one is the, the latest one um, where they go to Iceland. So I'm very interested in Iceland. I've never been. It's on my list. Um, but the kids go to Iceland and they um, explore the um, it's called it looks like it says hair braid, but it's actually pronounced hair the breath. Um, but in the in the story. Um, it actually has a nickname called the Queen of Icelandic Mountains because it looks like a crown. Um, so these three scientists go to um, find out whether this, what they know or have heard that the volcano is dormant and they go to prove that it is, um, that it is indeed dormant and they use drones and um, ground sensors and they take samples of the, of the um, volcanic rock. Um, 
but it's really exciting and they get they um, then prove or disprove their hypothesis. I won't give it away. Um, next slide. So these are the other four that are in the series right now, um, insects in the rainforest. They discover um, a new insect in Costa Rica. Um, and I had gone to Costa Rica and really wanted to um, write about all the insects that were there. So I chose one and they, they go to in, inspect an ant and really actually discover that it's a beetle. Um, and then kid scientists, astronauts on the space station where they go on the space shuttle. And um, and they have a mission to do, and then something happens where the the solar panels come loose, and they have to solve a problem while they're out in space. Um, archaeologists on a dig, they go to Cambodia um, and um, look at. Um, they try to uncover artifacts from the Temple of Angkor Wat, and then kid scientists, marine biologists on a dive. Um, Maggie, um, the main character, wants to record a whale song and she has a hypothesis about a whale song. Um, and we can go to the next slide. And this is the latest one that I just saw all of the final art for, and it's going to be amazing. So these three scientists go to Yellowstone. Um, they have been year over year tracking a pack of gray wolves and they go back on their yearly um, visit to see how the wolves are doing and discover that the um, uh, co their collars, the couple of the wolf collars, the tracking collars are broken. And so the main character decides he's gonna try a new way to track the wolves, which is bioacoustics. So they actually are howling to the wolves and they are recording the wolves howls back um, in order to determine how the pack is growing or not growing. Um, and then they all have their own jobs, um, collecting scat, um, checking the checking the um, wolf pups den. Um, so that should be a really exciting book too. And that comes out next year. Next slide, please. And Cicada Symphony. This one just came out in May. Um, I did a lot of research for this before I even realized I was going to be writing a story or a book. Um, my husband and I were walking and walking and walking during the pandemic and walking our dog who was eating the cicadas. And I just sort of became obsessed with them. And every day I would tell my husband a new fun fact about the cicadas. And he said, it sounds like you're writing a book. Are you writing a book? And I said, no, but I think I might have to. Um, so I'm going to actually show you a, a little bit of um, information from my own slides um, in a minute um, about the cicadas, because a lot of people are a little bit freaked out by cicadas because they're so big and noisy, um, but they're really quite harmless. Um, next slide, please. And this is a sneak peek of the next book in this series called Octopus Acrobatics. And it's in similar in form in that it's a lyrical nonfiction with facts sprinkled in. Um, I won't give too much away, but I um, love octopuses. And um, if you haven't seen My Octopus Teacher, that a Netflix show that was also big during the pandemic, that sort of really hooked me into really loving this creature. So when I had the opportunity to write another one in this series, I immediately said I would love to write about octopuses. And thankfully, Albert Whitman and my editor agreed. So that comes out next year, too. And I'll see the next slide. Goldilocks and the Three Engineers. So this is my latest installment in uh, my Fractured Fairy Tale Steam series. Um, so Goldilocks is an inventor. Um, frankly, I, I didn't love how the original fairy tale ended. So I thought I really want this one to have a really kind of a happy ending, but a fun ending. Um, so she, instead of the bears going for a walk, she goes for a walk and the bears encounter her maker space. Um, and she's kind of a wacky inventor. I sort of modeled her after Rube Goldberg. And so she has all these crazy inventions and the bears come in while she's on her walk and they improve on her inventions. So the engineers in the story are the bears. Um, well, obviously Goldilocks too, but they, they come in and they help make all of her inventions better. And then they collaborate and they work together. Um, okay, next slide. Okay, so these are the other three in the series right now. Mary Had a Little Lab was the first one based on Mary Had a Little Lamb, the nursery rhyme. And Mary is an inventor also, but she's lonely. So she decides she needs a pet, but she decides to make one in her lab. And of course it is a sheep. Um, and that's a super fun one. Little Red Rhyming Hood, um, her nemesis is a uh, big Brad Wolf, uh, an, a 
a boy who teases her because she only speaks in verse. And this one explores poetry and essentially um, how poetry and writing make the two um, come together and become friends and then become writing partners, which is fun for me. And then pr The Princess and the Petri Dish, and I'll talk a little bit about this one, a little more about this one too, but um, Pippa is a princess and she really doesn't love the princessy things. She loves science. Um, and so she decides that she needs to make a name for herself. And so among all of her experiments, she decides she doesn't like peas. So she is going to create a tastier pea and she creates a chocolate pea. Um, and you'll sort of notice, and I'm sure this is the case with Andrea too, but um, I gravitate towards strong female characters, main characters, um, uh, and to tell the story. The kid scientist has a mix, um, but these fractured fairy tales are all um, the strong female leads. Okay, next slide. Oh, and this is a sneak peek of the next one that comes out next year, Beauty and the Beaker. Um, and this takes place, Beauty is on an island and the power keeps going out because of storms, um, which we've seen a lot of lately. So she decides she's gonna figure out a better way um, to power her town and she creates a green energy with algae. Okay, I'm not sure if there's any slides after this, but um, if not, I am going to switch over to my slides. So give me one second. I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully you'll be able to see it. Okay. So I just wanted to quickly talk about, so when I visit schools, um, first of all, also, I, I meant to mention this um, in the beginning, but thank you to all librarians and educators fighting the good fight to keep books in schools to keep li our libraries open and accessible and all the resources that you give to the communities. It's, it's really special and we're all, we're all trying to do our part. So um, anyway, just a thank, quick thank you. Um, so in Kid Scientist, uh, Marine Biologist on a Dive, I just wanna show you when I, when I talk to schools, I will um, show them sort of like what kind of research I do behind each book and then how I incorporate it into the actual text. So of course in that I did a lot of studies on marine biology um, and then that each scientist in the book has a job. So Jacob take note, takes notes underwater and sketches in his underwater notebook and Lucia collects plankton. And then we have Arjun filming the whales and Maggie hoping to record a whale song. And then here she is recording a whale song and there she is um, in her lab uh, listening to the whale song because she wants to, her hypothesis is that the whales have a repeating pattern. And then at the end of, the, of, the, of each of the stories, it shows how all the work they've done in their lab, they're going over it. And then, as I mentioned, the steps of the scientific method and how, how a child could eventually become a marine biologist or whatever it might be. This is some cicada stuff. Um, so I, as I mentioned, I was obsessed with the cicadas. I was taking pictures of them. I was learning as much as I could about them. Um, here's a little, this is the introduction or the very first page. There's a secret you should know. Bugs are lurking down below. In the earth, nymphs lay in wait for their turn to activate. And then there's just various facts about the cicadas sprinkled in. So you can see them and then there he is, uh, the cicada popping out of its exoskeleton. And then here they are and they're they're harmless. So even though they're a little creepy, um, there I am holding one. And then there's my husband with one on his nose. He is much braver than I am, um, but I, I he's a good sport. Um, so I, hopefully this won't freak out too many people, but I'm gonna show you just how harmless cicadas are. Okay, so that is, that's my husband showing, proving that cicadas are so harmless, you could even put one in your mouth. Um, and then here, here they are all gathered, um, singing their song. And here's the cicada that I videotaped on a tree. And you probably can't hear it because I didn't put the sound on, but it's, it just makes a clicking noise. And I, we're, they're all over where, where we are now too. Okay. 
And then, as I mentioned, those are my my nonfiction. And then Goldilocks, um, you know, the, the research I did was maybe not as much research as I do for other books, but I, of course, researched the original fairy tale. And then I based it off of Rube Goldberg and his wacky invention. So I had Goldilocks become a wacky inventor. So she creates gadgets that could zip your coat and tie your tennis shoes, tools that help you seek and find whatever you might lose. And for the princess in the Petri dish, I researched the original fairy tale, of course. Um, and then I had to figure out a way to work the peas in. And that's how I got the idea that maybe she would create a tasty pea. And when I was a kid, I didn't like peas. So I would have really um, enjoyed tasting Pippa's chocolate peas. So I learned how to grow a pea because I wanted the information about that, even though it's a small portion of the book, to be accurate. Um, and so here she is. Um, with her experiments, yet Pippa's lab experiments were never a success. Her hand soap turned your fingers blue. Her slime balls made a mess. Her bubble gum was brittle, her fizzy soda flat. Her mouthwash made your breath smell bad and no one wanted that. And then finally, this is where the, the science part comes in. Um, where she, and that's when Pippa hatched a plan. I'll grow a better pea with flavor so delicious all the people will agree. She grabbed a brand new Petri dish and started right away. She lined the dish with paper towels and set it on a tray. And those are my STEM um, picture books. So I am going to stop sharing and just say that basically I am, um, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me book list. And um, if you do wanna contact me, I do school visits and virtual and in-person. Um, and library events and all of those kinds of things. So thank you for having me here today. And I'm gonna turn it back to our host. To me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Sue, that was fantastic. Thank you. And next we will hear from our second author guest, Andrea J. Loney. Andrea is an award-winning author residing in Los Angeles, California with her towering stacks of picture books. Albert Whitman is the home of some of Andrea's most loved tales, including the picture book, Bunny Bear, an ALA rainbow list title, and her stellar chapter book series, Abbey in Orbit. After receiving her MFA from New York University, she joined a traveling circus, then stayed in Hollywood to make movies. Now Andrea teaches computer classes at a community college with her family and their embarrassingly spoiled pets. Thank you so much for joining us, Andrea. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to be here for Science Reads for Summer and Beyond. Thank you so much to Albert Whitman. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Karima. Thank you, everybody, Josh, for um, having us here. And um, I'm just so excited about the Abbey and Orbit series because it is my first chapter book series, and it's based on things that are very, very close to my heart, which are um, socio-emotional learning and space. I just love all of this. So can we go to the next slide? Okay. So yeah, Abby's a third grader who um, is living on the International Space Station with her parents and there is some real science in this in the story i put that information usually in the back matter so you can see what's going on with science right now but also kind of projecting into what might be happening in the future um the main character is afro latinx um like my dad and also like um some other famous scientists who i'm going to show you in a moment um, and she's really good at problem solving. So she kind of creates situations, but then she uses all of that to uh, solve them. And um, all of the characters in this series are based on real people in my life um, or real experiences that I've had with my students of some sort or another, because this is, oh, wow. Next year's my 20th year as a teacher, as an educator. So there's been a lot of them. Um, next slide. So let's see what I wanted to say about this. Another fun, interesting thing about Abby is when they told me um, 
when I first started working on it, the editor that I was working with, Christina, said they were looking for a little black Anne of Green Gables in space. And I just thought that was such a great and fun idea to, um, you know, to write to write about a, a child who's kind of, you know, a little bit all over the place, but trying to keep things together. Um, so there's a big focus on action and consequence, huge focus. Um, and there's also a focus on friends and family. Every story starts and ends with her with her family and learns, you know, what whatever it is that she has to learn outside of that. Basically, she's learning emotional lessons through science is is how it works. And um, and it reminds everybody that change can be overwhelming for everyone, including adults. OK, next slide. Um, and there's more books in the series. We have Abby in Orbit Space Race, which involves programming and virtual reality and um, how to deal with when your best friend also is friends with your best frenemy, all those kind of things. And then the Abbey and Orbit All Systems Woe is um, coming out September 28th. That's the next one. And that one is based on, again, some real life experiences that I had not in space, but at one of my workplaces. So um, let's see. And then the next slide shows all three of them, right? Oops, sorry, thought there was another slide. So yeah, so those are the those are the Abbey and Orbit books and there's more coming next year. There's just more coming. So let me show you, I wanna tell you a little bit about how I got here with the Abbey and Orbit. So I'm going to, um, I would like to share my screen and here we go. Share screen, continue. And I'm gonna go to this PowerPoint so I can show it to you. Okay. So let me just make sure I can see everything I wanted to see here. Yes, okay. So yeah, really quickly, I wanna give you a little bit of a countdown to where the Abbey and Orbit series came from like in my life. Come on, sorry, trying to get to the next slide. There we go. So first of all, um, all this starts with my grandma back in the 1970s. We really did have color back then. That's just what photos look like. Um, my grandma was a literacy specialist. So I come from a family of educators and she was so excited when I was born in the early 70s because she was able to show me these books that had little black children in them. So from right at the beginning of my life, I saw myself in books because someone worked very hard to make sure that my introduction to books had people that showed me that there was a place for me in the world of literature. Um, and also um, The Snowy Day and Corduroy because the little girl Lisa looked a lot like my mom. There's my gorgeous mom. Um, and, you know, there were other books that I liked as well. So when I was in the second grade, I decided I was going to write children's books. And um, if you look at the first picture, the first school that I went to, there were kids from all over the world. Our families were all oh, from all over the world. My dad is from Panama. So we all, a lot of us were first generation American kids um, or maybe second generation and then I moved to a new town in the middle of the second grade, and it was so disturbing for me and scary for me. Um, and that's something that also comes out in the Abby book where she comes to school after everybody else has already gotten there. So she's got to start in a new place. Um, when I was little, I don't know if any of you folks have seen the Cosmo series with Carl Sagan. Um, the more recent version of it is um, with Neil deGrasse Tyson, he runs it. And Neil deGrasse Tyson is actually Afro-Latino. I believe his mom is um, Puerto Rican. And that I thought was amazing. And I just love learning everything about space. There's a picture of me thinking about writing about space or lots of other things. I was nine years old at a party with my notebook. So that's the kind of kid I was, right? Um, I wrote lots of different stories, made all kinds of things, but I had a little sister, so a lot of what I write about Nabby in Orbit is about what does it mean to be like a big sister and, you know, taking care of your little 
sister or little brother. Um, my mom in this picture, I think at that point, she was the VP of the intranet at um, Merrill Lynch. Um, so my mom has been involved with computers my entire life. And my daddy down here, here's my grandpa from Panama um, and my other grandpa you saw before. And my dad worked for 3M selling printing products. So he would bring home computer prototypes all the time. Like he brought home the, um, the Apple Lisa, which was the precursor to the Macintosh. He bought me my first computer when I was like 11 um, and like, the early eighties. So we were very, I was a very tech oriented family that I grew up in. My mom made us make like presentations if we wanted to ask for something. So yeah, it was like that. Um, and then yes, I joined a circus right after I got my master's degree. My dad's still mad about that. But here's something interesting about being in the circus. The circus had families there and the families had children and the children went to school in one big trailer called the, um, the one trailer schoolhouse, right? Or the one ring schoolhouse. So my first big work experience was working on a workplace where everybody lived and everybody worked all at the same time and there were children there and the children were kind of like your kids too because you had to watch out for everybody so that is a lot of the um experiences that abby goes through including in the most recent book that's coming out in um i'm sorry in all systems woe all systems woe was based on a really bad day at the circus where one person's mistake led to a whole bunch of other things that rippled throughout the entire crew and cast and everybody. So it was really fun to be able to take that experience and, you know, put it in a different place. So then I worked at um, the Walt Disney Company on and off for about 15 years. I learned a lot there about storytelling, um, I learned a lot about work ethic, just all kinds of things. And it was around that time that I decided that I was going to use all my technical knowledge that I had and become a computer teacher. So I was a computer teacher right about this time, mostly teaching people how to use Microsoft Office and sometimes the history of computers, that kind of thing. So then... Um, I, my first books came out, including Bunny Bear, which was my very first book published by Albert Whitman. And um, I traveled all over the country with this book and it was these books and it was really exciting. And then that thing happened. Y'all know about that thing, right? And then I couldn't go anywhere. My, my mom and my sister both had COVID. My sister was in and out of the hospital with it. I was really, really scared. I just was so upset about so many things. And then I got an email saying there may be this project about this little black girl in space, little black Anne of Green Gables in space and what I'd like to write it. So I researched everything I could on the International Space Station, just everything. Um, how people, you know, what do they eat? How do they go to the bathroom? What do they do when they get bored? What happens when you put your hand someplace because everything's kind of all together? And I also, studied what happened in other countries space programs as well went to museums it was wonderful to do all of that i learned about how toilets work on the international space station which was really exciting and um oh yeah and then i have a picture of me jemison there and i also went to a website um, called Space Dashboard, which I don't think I have in here. Yeah, I don't think I have that in here. The Space Dashboard shows you what the International Space Station can see at any given moment and where it is in the world. So all of that. I just did as much research as I could on it. And it was so much fun to be able to do that and then to be able to boil it down to something that like a second grader could understand and then share that. Okay. So yeah, so we have the three Abbey and Orbit books. And again, the next book comes out September 28th. All right. So if you'd like to meet Abby, I could read just a little bit, maybe like the first two pages. Okay. So Abby and Orbit, Out of This World. So this is, whoops, sorry, the first book. Let's go back here. Abby, are you listening to me? Mommy asked as she snapped the barrette on the end of my braid. 
Yes, mommy, I said, even if it wasn't 100% completely all the way true, since I was still watching my new tablet. Yes, it was turned off, but it was floating in the air, spinning right in front of me. We'd only been on the space station for a few days. I wasn't used to microgravity. Papa says it's way less gravity than there is on Earth, but like a tiny bit more gravity than there is on the moon. I just thought it was out of this world amazing and 11 to 70 kinds of cool. Things are so different here, I said. Mommy sighed and shook her head. Her swirly curly crown of black hair looked even more amazing in space. Again, beautiful mom story, right? Um, wow, mommy, you're like the queen of the universe. Mommy turned to Papa. Jeremiah, please talk to this child. I need to see if NASA updated the coordinates for today's experiment. She stretched out her tablet and started typing. So Abby, the twinkle in Papa's eye and a big fat pun was coming. Why did the little astronaut get in trouble at school? I knew that one because she kept spacing out. That's my girl, Papa laughed. You're ready for the third grade. And then beyond that, I'm not going to read the rest of these, but also, I just want you to notice the gorgeous illustrations by Fuji Takashi. She just like totally brought these characters to life. It's It's been wonderful. So anyway, I wanted to say thank you very much for having me. And um, you can find me at andreajloney.com or on social media. And I love to do virtual and in-person school visits and just talk to kids about turning your real life into a book or how science is all around us. And we get to be a part of what science is going to be in the future by what it is that we can do right now. Okay. So um, thank you so much. And I would like to stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Josh. Thank you, Andrea. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Josh Gregory. I'm an editor here at Albert Whitman. Um, since starting here a couple of years ago, I've worked on a huge range of projects and picture books, middle grade novels, chapter book series, uh, including some of the forthcoming books in the incredible Abby and Orbit series. I'm really, really, really excited about those. Um, I mean, my favorite thing about working at AW, regardless of the type of books that I'm doing, is that uh, I know that these books are going to connect with kids and give them the knowledge that they can use to interact with the world in a positive way and, you know, become the next generation of people pushing things forward. Um, and one project recently that I think really does a good job of that is our science in action series, which kicked off late last year. Um, you know, we have obviously a lot of, wonderful picture books and we've got the chapter book series dealing with steam topics um but for this we wanted to pitch something at slightly older kids these are middle grade um they're aimed at kids ages 9 to 12. they're about 200 pages each so they're pretty substantial books i would say they're even good books for adults who are looking for introductions to these topics I know that I personally have learned a lot from reading them and, and working on them. Uh, the first one to come out was Vaccines Change the World. Um, you know, obviously COVID really brought vaccines and pandemics to the forefront of conversation. So this book kind of, you know, is very of the moment. Um, and it, it tackles the history of vaccines from the very beginning, the creation of the smallpox vaccine in 1796. And it traces the history all the way to the unprecedented you know, global effort to find a COVID vaccine. Um, and along the way, it tackles everything involved with that from the discovery of germ theory to different types of vaccines and how they work. And it just, it goes into everything in such detail and in such a clear way. Um, again, I, I learned an incredible amount from this book. And um, next slide, please. And then our second book in the series is Climate, Our Changing World, which 
tackles another very, very, very important and contemporary topic. Um, and again, you know, the goal here with these books is to take a really complex topic and present it in a really clear way that kids are going to be able to latch onto and understand. Um, this book in particular really encourages them to take action and set goals that they can uh, participate in and achieve to help with the fight against climate change. Um, and on that note, you know, it takes a very positive, optimistic tone. Um, even though this is a tough issue, there's an emphasis here on the ways that people are fighting back and kind of encourages readers to have faith in human ingenuity, our ability to overcome all of this. Um, both of these books, uh, this series as a whole, you know, they're really meant to start conversations, raise questions, and encourage kids to keep investigating these topics even after they've read the books. I think they're great for classrooms, but you know they also are a nice book for a kid to take away and read if they're just interested in understanding the the topic. Um, and you know that means we need to get their attention with these books. So even though they are big long books um, about science. They're very graphical and they're fun. They've got sidebars, charts, illustrations, photos. And these are topics that kids are gonna have a general familiarity with and an interest in. Um, and that offers us the chance to discuss all kinds of STEAM topics in relation to that. So these books are gonna have little bits about chemistry, biology, meteorology, engineering, math, all that stuff, you know, and how it relates to the broader topic. And it shows how those things have real world applications, how they can make a difference. Um, and I think it you know, encourages kids to pursue this stuff. Um, a big goal with this series is to take these, these topics and make them digestible. And one thing we do in these books is to kind of organize everything into self-contained chapters that you can read separately or you know, they'll add up to a bigger whole as you work through the entire book. Uh, the tone is very conversational. We try to avoid these books sliding into just pure reportage. We don't want anyone's eyes glazing over. They're, they're fun. Um, there's a lot of direct address to the reader. Um, we are balancing a lot of the facts with stories and anecdotes and things like that that are going to be uh, attention grabbing. Um, but that said, you know, there is a lot of factual, hard information behind all of that. And that means a lot of research. Um, there's a lot that goes into creating these books. Um, they're all hands on deck. The author's leading the way with the research, but the editors, the art team, and pretty much everybody involved is also conducting research along the way. Um, there's a huge density of facts. We have a dedicated fact checker looking at these books just to make sure everything is, you know, on track. Um, and then once we have all that information, you know, deciding how to organize it is, is one of the tough parts of the book. We need to present things in an order where the information is building um, upon each chapter without getting out of order or you know, getting ahead of ourselves or being too digressive. Um, we always need to remember that these books might be for someone who knows very little about the topic going into it. We want them to come away with a very thorough understanding. Um, they're a lot of work, um, but I think they're worth it. I think, you know, if you look at these books, you'll see the results and yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun. So, um, I think that's all I got. So thank you for having me and I will turn it over to Karima. Hi everyone. Uh, to wrap things up, I would like to say thank you. Thank you all for listening and thank you to our amazing authors for joining us and our editor, Josh, for being part of this webinar. Uh, thank you to you guys for joining and listening and to all the teachers, librarians, and educators for doing what you do best and promoting the love that we have for reading. Be sure to follow us on social we, we, where we do some cool things and give you guys all the latest AW updates. And with that, I think I will pass it on to our host.
Thank you so much, Karema and Josh, and to Andrea and Sue as well. Um, I do encourage everyone, if you want to learn more about our guest authors, you can check out their personal websites, which for Sue is www.suefleece.com, which is spelled S-U-E-F-L-I-E-S-S. And for Andrea, it's andreajloney.com. Um, we're so glad you are all able to join us today. And I will wrap up this webinar. So tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's video recording, title list, PowerPoint slides, and a certificate of completion. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Recently, ALA's Office for Intellectual Freedom reported 1,269 demands to censor library books and resources in 2022, the highest number of attempted book bans since ALA began compiling data about censorship in libraries more than 20 years ago. Join the Unite Against Book Bans campaign to help protect the freedom to read and to empower readers everywhere. You can visit uniteagainstbookbans.org for more information, resources, and more. We have a special announcement. Introducing Booklist's Book Club, a year-long partnership with your favorite publishers. Each month, Booklist will showcase book club picks and supporting materials from a different publisher, offering a wide range of genres and age groups to fit the needs of any book. Discussion group excuse me, mark your calendars for September when we'll, we will reveal the first selection from HarperCollins Children's Books. To find out more information, scan the QR code on this slide or visit our website. Whether your young patrons and students are visiting the library after school or stopping by on the weekends for some new items, grow your collection with Booklist. Subscribe now to get print and digital copies of Booklist archive access to past issues, and digital access to our new publication, Booklist Reader, for only $99. Visit our website for more details. Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar, and one final thank you to our panelists and to our sponsor, Albert Whitman. This concludes today's webinar. <laughs>